Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Gruesome's Garage. Happy Independence Day, which is technically tomorrow, but I'm not going to make a video on Independence Day, so I'm going to wish you a happy 4th of July today. And remember, no matter where we come from, whether we're Native American, whether we're immigrants like the majority of us are, at the end of the day, we're all Americans. And regardless of all the de uh, decisiveness out there, please keep that in mind, especially on 4th of July. So, let me get to the project on hand today. The other day we pulled the gas tank out of the 1976 Firebird. And I told you I had to get it cleaned up, and we're going to do that today. We're going to pressure wash the tank. We're going to take the sending unit out, and we're going to look inside to see what condition it is. There's still a little gas sloshing around in there. I thought I got most of it out, but I can rattle the tank. It's still here a little bit that the siphon pump was obviously not able to get. So we'll get that out of there. If I got some uh, POR Marine Clean, we'll mix that up, put it in there, and let the tank set overnight to see what kind of gunk comes, comes out of it. Let's get on with the job in hand. Okay, we're going to give the tank a good healthy cleaning with some simple green. A lot of dust and dirt on it. There's some surface rust in this tank, but it doesn't seem to be leaking anywhere. Worst thing you got to worry about with uh, rust in a tank is the seams, because that's usually where they start to leak first. really cruddy around that vent line. Alright, I'm going to pause the video here for a little bit while I do some more cleaning. And when I get to the pressure wash stage of it, I will fire things back up. Alright, folks are ready to hit it with a pressure washer. Okay, I'm not going to make you listen to the pressure washer because it's kind of loud, but this is the point where we started to pressure wash the tank. There was a lot of buildup on the tank around the vent line, as you will hear later in the video, there was actually a hole around where the top of the, where the, where the vent line mounted, it was like, it looked like there was a piece soldered in there, and right around there there was a hole. And all that gas vapor coming out over the years, it actually caused a buildup on the tank. It was like a uh, gooey mix. And that's why I was having a lot of trouble scrubbing that off. Uh, now, I marked the hole with a paint pen, and we'll plug that up later in the uh, project when we're getting the tank ready to you know, come back in the car. So, 
But yeah, there was a lot of buildup of like sand, stones um, around the where the gas line met up with the seams. Just the tank was dirty. I mean, it had some surface rust in here and there, and it wasn't really other than the one hole around the vent line in bad shape. But it definitely needed the clean. So it got it clean, and it looks a lot better now. As you can see, got a lot of the gunk off it. Definitely a lot cleaner than it was. Let well, things dry off a little bit, then we'll pop the setting unit out. Okay, the tank's dried off now. We, I did discover a leak on it. There was a lot of gunk of build and build up right around here around this vent. There's a hole right here. And I'm going to mark it with my paint pen so I know where it is. After I pressure washed it, I noticed some water bubbling out of there. So that explains the buildup. So we're going to have to repair that. I mean the sealer will repair it, but just to be safe I'm probably going to take some POR patch or maybe some um, JB Weld, something just to seal that up. Now we've got our lines freed up here. There's these little spring clips. I already, un I already undid them. Smaller version of what I was using the other day. I'm going to cut this gas line here. It's actually a vent line, not a gas line. in that tank. There we go. Alright. I have a blunt screwdriver over here. Works good for doing this kind of stuff. You want to make sure you uh, undo the trim ring for the center. Seals in pretty rough shape on this. Oh, there she goes. Now you'll see there's cutouts here. You want to line those up. And we'll get your trim right out. We'll let your center come out. I don't imagine this is going to pop right out. Oh, what's wrong? Yeah, <laughs> seal's about at it. Okay, now there's a sender on here, a float. It's going to take a little bit of dexterity to get it out. Uh, that sucks. Hey, you know, there she goes. 
is your sock, your sender float, the harbor gasket that seals it to the gas tank. So we're going to set this over here on a piece of cardboard for right now. And we do still have some fuel left in there, so we're going to drain that out. without making a mess. You know, I was expecting this to smell like varnish, but it actually still has a gasoline smell to it. I'm kind of surprised by that. Last registration to this car that I could see that was on the road was 1980 or uh, 2005, so I'm going to assume that gas is at least that old. I was told the original engine, the block cracked, and they pulled it out, and the car just sat and sat in a barn. The guy that I bought it from bought it with the intentions of restoring it. I think he started working on it. Then, you know, a lot of people, they get sidetracked, things happen in life, and they just can't get the restoration going. So, all right, I'm going to go grab a flashlight and we're going to take a peek in there. Okay. I know it's a little tough to see in there. I had to try a couple different LED lights because the reflection was too great. But that tank is good inside. I don't see any really rust buildup in it or, I mean, I'd have to get in there with a scope and look around. But this tank is serviceable, other than the small leak in the top and I'd probably clean up the rust on it a little bit. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix up some marine clean if I can find a, a little bit of it around the house, put it in there, slosh it around to get what's left of the old gas and stuff out of there and um, we'll go from there but this is definitely a stroke of luck and it's going to save me some money okay everybody i was able to find some marine clean i call it cleaner degreaser now but it's the same stuff now this stuff is water soluble you want them at four to one ratio so this is a quart so I used a gallon bucket, one quart to three quarts water. And you want to, it doesn't specifically say in the instructions, but I found out if you use warm water, it works better that way. Something about the warm water brings out the um, active ingredients in the cleaner. Now, I normally wear gloves with sleeves, but I didn't have any. This stuff will burn if it gets on you. It is a water-based cleaner, but it has an alkali in it. So you want to make sure to uh, use good gloves and good eye protection. I've got um, glasses on that cover my eyes pretty good right now. Goggles or a shield would work too. This stuff works really good for cleaning gas tanks, but I'm going to be honest with you, if the tank is really cruddy inside, it's going to take more than one application. That 36 Hudson Terraplane, I went through, I had to end up ordering more from POR than came in the kit. It just would not... They want the water to come out clean, and it just kept application after application to get all that gunk out of there. This tank, though, is like I showed you earlier, is in good condition. I don't think we'll have too much trouble with it. I just want to get any loose crud or anything that's in there out. So I'm slowly pouring the cleaner. Mindful of splashing. Three 
down in there. And I'm not endorsed by POR, I'm not endorsed by anybody, it'd be nice to be, but <laughs> I just, I've been using this stuff, my dad used POR products back in the 80s, he kind of turned me on to the stuff. I've heard a lot of stuff online, social media, that it's not that good of stuff, it peels off. If you use POR for what it's designed for, and their products for what it's designed for, and follow the instructions, they work well blow air through the tank I use a shop vac in reverse to do that to get every little bit of moisture out or the it won't work okay so we got the cleaner in there now as you see I already patched off that one little hole we had I just use duct tape you can use whatever you want to seal them up What you want to do is you want to slosh the tank around. I'll take it out into the shade. You set it up on its side, you set it up on the back, and I usually go 24 hours. And you want to save flipping it over to the top last because I care how good you do the duct tape, it's going to leak out. Like I said, this is a water based cleaner, so if you get a little on the ground, I don't think it's going to hurt any. Not like a petroleum based cleaner. I still would have recommended getting it on the grass, but it's going to kill it. We got that sealed up. Like I said, I'll take it over there in the shade. I'll flip it up on its end, um, put it on its back. I'll just slosh it all around. You know, what you do is you leave it there for like a little while, then you go back over and you flop it over to the other side. That way you get the whole tank, the whole surface inside the tank clean. So, I'll let you know. I'll probably make another video once we get the tank clean, and we're going to do the, some prep work on it. I'm going to clean up this rust. I'm probably going to take some POR patch and get it into the seams. We're definitely going to have to fix that leak. Um, I don't know about a new sender, definitely a new gasket, new sock probably, obviously. We'll go from there. I, I'm just a little nervous about going to a new sender because I hear about people's gas gauges not being accurate after doing that. Alright, well I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And have a wonderful 4th of July. And a safe 4th of July. Don't blow your fingers off with fireworks, please. Thank you.